Welcome to the Bar Intensity Online Instructor Certification Program. We're honored, pleased, and excited that you chose us as your Bar Certification Program. When finishing this instructor training, you will leave with the knowledge, confidence, passion, and excitement for Bar Intensity. You'll learn the foundations needed in order to become a well-rounded and successful Bar Instructor. Number three, is to fatigue the primary muscle group before moving on to the next. Yes, with bar intensity, we put together movements, so upper body and lower body. We quickly move from one move to the next, but we always make sure we have an intended focus for each exercise or group of exercises that we do. And that intended focus has to do with a group of muscles. So for example, if I were to be doing biceps and that were my intended focus for the next few minutes, I would make sure that I not only do enough repetitions of the bicep exercise, let's say it's bicep curls, but I'll do enough variations to be sure that I truly fatigue that bicep before I move on to shoulders or tricep or down into plank work. And as you start to get a little bit warmer, slowly but surely lengthen those legs, making your way to straight leg kicks. Chest is lifted, shoulders over those hips. Pull, really reach, pull, push. You got it. Keep kicking, arms stay in high V. Beautiful, lift, grow taller. Slice down that opposite arm, reach it towards the toes. Reach, reach. Gaze this forward. Last eight here, it's it. Five, four, push, three, and two. One, nice job, take it down. So 132, a little bit of a different feel. If you were trying it yourself, you could significantly feel a difference. Same moves, we just changed the BPM. That felt a little bit more like a warm up. I wanna talk about acceptable intense cardio choreography. Bar intensity still has a foundation in traditional bar technique, which is low impact movement. So we get that heart rate up in a way that's still low impact. And for our definition, for our purposes, we define low impact as having one or both feet on the ground at all times. And lie on down. From this point, I'm gonna have you lift your legs up towards the sky. And this is gonna show you just how important it is for all of our different alignment positions and how they intertwine. As you start to lower your legs for me, I want you to keep the rib cage connected and the abdominals drawn in. I want you to lengthen the spine. Good, keeping that nice neutral optimal spine. Gorgeous. Now lift your legs back up towards the sky for me when you're ready. And again, her core is working hard. It is right where it needs to be for doing this abdominal work. Lift it back up. Now as you start to lower your legs, let your low back arch, let your rib cage pop open. When that rib cage separates, the abdominal muscles lift, the low back arches, and it is painful for the back. And you're no longer working the abdominal muscles the way that they're intended. And that there's proper alignment here. So if the toes are turned out, the knees are angled in the same direction as the toes, and the hip is opened in that same direction. It's pretty important to keep this alignment because there are points and times in the class where we will hold a wide V position and we will work in that position doing pulses, doing knee presses, or even doing pelvic tucks and releases. And this position is better if it is going to have that alignment. Now I want you to show me something, Stephanie. I want you to roll back on that foot a little bit and lift. This is not proper alignment. I want you to go ahead and roll inward and let the knees tip forward. That is no longer proper alignment. Take it back to where it is proper and just hold for me here. Very often in class, you will see that clients will try to turn their feet out even further. Now, if they're a dancer and they have that, that open ability through their hips, they're more than welcome to go there, but that's not where we're going to have them go. For the most part, we're gonna direct that the toes are gonna to reach out towards the corners of the room and we're gonna have the hips turned out, the knees turned out, and the toes turned out. Go ahead and come standing. Yeah. Take that So the break. first is starting with the legs, again, hip distance parallel. So typically if you're in the gym, working out with a personal trainer, you might see a squat in a wider stance. We keep it in our um, standard exercise, we keep it more narrow, hip distance parallel. For purposes of the arms, we always like to have something with the arms. They could be anywhere you'd like, but our hands are in prayer. So pressing those palms of the hands together, engaging your chest. Alyssa is going to flex at the hips, so push that seat, the tailbone back, bend at the knees to lower the body down, and then go ahead and straighten the knees, extend the hips to stand up tall, so it's a down and an up. She's pressing the weight into her heels, shifting her weight back, 
so she can now engage her glutes, she can engage her hamstrings. Oftentimes you'll see a little mistake of clients shifting their weight forward, even letting their heels lift, shifting the foot lift, the heels lift, not healthy for the knees, not effective for the glutes, for the hamstrings. So again, you think about driving the weight back, there you go, reaching the weight back and standing up tall. We're taking you through a warm-up series. So we've gone through all the exercises in the warm-up, now we're gonna put it to music. We're gonna put it together exactly as we would in a warm-up for our bar intensity class. Starting legs to hip distance parallel, hands in prayer, taking full range squats right here. It's down, and up, and down. Alyssa's gonna be demoing. I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking, showcasing here and there, but Alyssa's your guide. You watch Alyssa right here. So you're shooting it down, pulling up, drive those hips back. Squeeze the glutes at the top. Purpose of the warm up. Get that body warm. Bring the blood flowing through the extremities. Preparing for the 55 minutes of work ahead. Reducing the risk of injury. Getting a little bit deeper into the squats. Aiming for the thighs parallel to the floor. That's it, nice and low. Start to have those arms. Take those arms high V as you bend down. Here we go, high V. Pull up, you've got it. Reach, pull. Reach, press the palms of the hands together. Activate that chest. When you reach those arms up, feel those back extensors work. Work into the back. Now if this is getting into the low back, when you lift those arms up high, you know that you can keep those hands in prayer. If it's pulling on the shoulders, keep those hands in prayer or reach those arms more in front of the body. In four, we hold it low. Three, two, hold it low on one. Hands in prayer. Moving on from here, we're going into tricep muscles and we're gonna start with the tricep kickbacks. This is best hinge at the hips and the deeper you hinge at these hips, the harder it's going to be, the more challenging it's going to be because your body is fighting against gravity. The elbows are pulled back and you're straining those arms behind you, focusing on that length and that reach. This hinge happens at the elbows, so nothing happens here at the shoulders. The shoulders don't move. You don't lower the arms and then lift them. The arms stay lifted and you hinge at the elbow and push the arms back. Some different variations could be changing the palms, so the palms can face up as you bend the elbows, the knuckles can face up as you bend the elbows, or the palms can face in towards each other as you bend the elbows. We also have little bend stretches. So a little bend, reach, reach, emphasis on the length. I like to cue my class, I like to say, reach those arms back as if those fingertips are gonna tap against the wall behind you, giving a bigger stretch. And I watch that the shoulders are square, and I watch that the abdominals are lifted and the hips are back. Tall, arms push them back, hinge at the hips, bend those knees, straight arm lifts, up, up, straight arm lifts. Beautiful, I want you to reach those arms back a little bit longer. Stretch them, lengthen that. Shoulders nice and square. Spine is long, belly is lifted. Up, up, envision those fingertips tapping the wall behind you. Can you get them a little bit longer? You have eight and then we bend those elbows. Last five, three, two. Bend those elbows, bend and kick it back. Tricep kick back, stretching and reaching those arms even longer behind you with each stretch. Eight more here, them little tiny bend presses. Now we go right into knee taps. So you can bend one knee at a time, or you could bend both knees at a time, down and up. Important thing with knee lifts is that the hips stay still in space. So a lot of times, especially with the arms straight, the hips want to go down, so lower the hips as you bend them, yes, right? So it's not a hip lower and lift, hips stay steady and still, you just bend the knees. You use those abdominals, control, lower and lift. You could take it slower pace, or you could take a quick here, switch, 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 a little bit of variation with tempo with those knee taps. From here, we rock forward and back. You wanna do this on your forearms? So you start with those elbows underneath the shoulders, legs back, rock forward, hold. Just rock forward and hold. So now you see shoulders come forward of those elbows. Now rock back. When you rock back, drive through the heels, hold. Nice stretch for those calves as well. So you take it forward and you take it back. A Little bit of movement in the body. Again, intense strength option right there. So just a small lift. Those hips are square. You're working through the base of the seats, the glutes, the hamstrings to lift the leg in one piece. Nice long line, nice pointed toes. You've got four more here. Three, two, float the leg down, switch, opposite leg comes up. Just hold to start, hold it there. Square hips, squeeze that seat. Now we pause, take it up and up 
knee stays long. The knee is not bending and straightening, not even a bit. It's a hip extension to lift that leg. One more inch. Up, we've got four, we've got three, it's two, it's one. Float it down, we pike it up, two counts. Up, down, and down, we pike. Up, up, down. Let this be a little active recovery for you. Knowing at any time, if you need to place those knees down on the ground, you can. Come right back with us when you're ready. Pike it up, up, single count. Here we go, we lift it up, we drive it back. When you pike those hips up, Feel a nice opening for your chest, maybe a little bit of stretch for your biceps. Find length behind the back of your legs. It's up, it's down. We've got for chair, you are going to face towards the bar for this first part of chair that we'll show. Your hands have an overhand grip there and you're gonna go ahead and take your toes right underneath that bar and then you're gonna straighten your arms, lean back, bend your knees and lower your hips. The idea here is to flex at the hips and bend the knees and we're aiming to try to get those thighs parallel to the ground. That's our goal is to get those thighs parallel. That would be where we want to stay. Now from this point here, your feet are flat on the ground and there are different variations we'll get into but for right now feet are flat and we're going to lift the hips and lower the hips back down. The spine is going to remain optimal, long oppositional spine, shoulders over the hips, you straighten the legs and you return. That's the exercise. Now the variations get fun. Four. We have six that we're going to hold in that V. close attention to the alignment of the spine, alignment of the hips. So she reaches that leg back, doing her best not to change the position of the spine. So go ahead and take those hips second forward for me just a little bit. Yep, yeah, but, now, but now take it back to even just a little bit more. Neutral, just find neutral for me. Yeah, a little bit more. Right there, perfect. So she's gonna maintain this position of the spine as she lifts her leg a couple inches and lowers. Just a small lift and lower. The leg is barely lifting up off the ground in this exercise. When you're standing straight up, when you keep your spine neutral, when you keep those hips in alignment, you don't have room to lift that leg. Now go ahead and let your back go lift the leg a little bit higher. Yeah, so just even arch the back. Yeah, so you see now an arching in the back, a little tension, a little stress. That's when the leg gets higher. We don't want to see that. So go back to standard position and work through me here. The hips stacked. So that top hip is on top of that bottom hip. That stacked alignment works with the shoulders as well. Top hip on her top shoulder on top of that bottom shoulder. Working the arm and the leg. So it's an intense strength and option here right from the start. We lift, we lower. It's four, then you hold that leg up high. Three, that arm's gonna stay in that T position. Hold it up, hold the T, little pulses right here. Take it up that leg. So squeezing the outer portion of the glutes, squeezing the outer portion of that thigh. The abdominals, the obliques are engaged right here. She's lifting away from my thumb. There you go. She has engagement in the shoulders here. So the shoulders pressing away from the ear, length between shoulder to ear. Lift a little bit higher. It's up. Yes, good. Lifting as high as you can go without changing the alignment of the hips, without changing the alignment of the spine. Up and up. It's four, three. You're going to take it. You're going to pulse that leg back. Pulse it back. It's back. It's so small. It's quick. It's small. You're squeezing the base of the seat now. So feel that work go more from outer to back. Very often I like to say that you're going to have a nice space behind your back. Sometimes I say you can put your favorite little handbag back there. And you're going to push those hands up into the bar. You're going to tilt your pelvis. So bring those hip bones up. Draw the navel in towards the spine. The legs are parallel, hip distance apart. So open them just a teeny bit. Just like that. Yep. Yep. Maybe your feet even a little closer together. 
There, perfect. Okay, so now from here, the exercise is just this. It's a pelvic tuck, so you tilt that pelvis, and then a release. And again, a pelvic tuck, and then a release. We wanna make sure the shoulders are down away from the ears, the hands are pushing up against the bar, and the upper back is against this wall. If she had a mat up there, her upper back would be against the mat. So she's not sitting upright, she's not slouching, she has a purposeful tuck of the pelvis, roundness of the low back here. Last four, keep the arms reaching. Two, just hold it here. Now take your right arm, you're gonna lift it up, back down, lift and lower. So we're not gonna change the position of the spine. Static hold here as that right arm lifts and lowers. We're not twisting, we're keeping those shoulders and knees center. Feet are rooted down in towards the ground as that arm lifts. We're gonna switch arms in two more. Up and down, last time. Up and down, other arm. Up and lower, lift. The levers now are further away from your torso, creating more work for the abdominal muscles as you hold the secret position. We're gonna to start to alternate the arms in two more. Up, up, now alternate. Take one, down, switch, down, up, down. Abdominals should be on fire at this point right now. They should be burning. You might even get to shake a little bit, and that's okay, that's great. We're going to a stretch for the glutes, the hamstrings, and the calves, and this is a fold over. Your fold over can be done standing, it can be done seated. So before you fold over, do me a favor, just sit up nice and tall. So reach those fingertips up, 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 without changing the shape of your spine, hinge forward from your hips as far as you can go. This is step one. Find this length first. Think about taking the backs of those knees and letting them come close towards the ground, holding it there. Now you can go ahead, let your spine round, let yourself come closer towards those thighs and hold deep into that stretch. You always have the option to flex those ankles, peel your toes up off the ground and feel the stretch go now down into the calves, so down towards the bottom of those legs. Go ahead, pick your chest up, bend your knees, come into a ball. So we're gonna go to the next stretch, which is for the backs, the back and the shoulders. It's a spine roll up. So right here, interlock those fingertips together and push the palms down towards the floor. Perfect. Now start to straighten those knees, but keep, the keep energy reaching down towards those fingertips, holding it there. She has a nice rounded spine. She's finding stretch, nice length for the upper mid back. She's pressing down towards the ground again as her upper mid back lifts up towards the ceiling. She's getting a nice stretch for her hamstrings as well. And bring herself all the way rolling, up to standing, unwinding low spine to the top, restacking those shoulders, gaze comes forward. So take those arms back behind you. You're gonna reach through those fingertips. You're gonna reach through those toes. Go ahead and arch your back. Let your back peel up off the ground, opening up those rib cage, lengthening up your abdominals, holding and breathing. Go ahead and close off your rib cage. Let your spine melt back down towards the floor. Lift your arms up towards the ceiling, chin towards your chest. Roll your spine, sit up nice and tall. Dive your chest forward over those thighs, holding. Go ahead, round that spine a little bit. See if those elbows can come down towards the ground. Lengthening behind the backs of those legs. Go ahead and flex those feet. Peel those toes back towards your shins. Sit yourself on up. Swing those legs back behind you. Come into all fours. Press into the balls of those feet. Come into your down dog stretch. So you push through those heels. Shift your weight back. Ears go right in between those biceps. Hold it. While you're teaching an exercise, for example, bicep curls, if you know that you eventually want to get to a bicep curl with a squat, let your class know that that's where they're headed. They're bending their elbows, and in three more, you're gonna have them bend their knees. So you're giving that little advertisement of what's coming up next. Forget the number one. It isn't that you can never say the number, but you will find that omitting it is going to be useful in setting up your next move. For example, once again, back to bicep curls with a squat. If I know that I eventually wanna to get to that squat, I will advertise. In five more, we are going to bend our knees. Three, two, bend those knees for me, down and up. So it gives you that option to let them know what's coming next and to then actually lead them into it a little bit more smoothly. How we're gonna finish it is lifting and lowering and then side bending. So let's take three, 
lifts up and lowers, and then take it to a side bend. Now the side bend can be done standing tall, or the side bend can be done with a bent knee, or a combination where you stand tall in between, and then you bend the knees as you bring it into a side bend. I think the purpose with this is, we're not showing you a full series. So we're not doing all the variations that we would do or the intense strength or the intense cardio. What we're showing is that you could get from knee lifts to straight leg kicks to squats to work in wide V to side bend without ever stopping the movement. So that's a, really the intent here. So again, this is not about choreography. This isn't how long we would say you do a warm up for. It's just showing how you get from one point to the other without letting the body rest.